Welcome back. This is the Cube. We're at the Software AG International User Group Conference in Dublin, Ireland. I'm Paul Gillen. We're here in day two. There's a lot of people here. It's very exciting. We've got a half dozen different tracks going on, lots of customer presentations. And one of the areas where we're seeing a lot of those presentations is in the product called Aris. And I have with me the general manager of Aris, Mark Veter. Mark, well, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Paul, for having me. For the uninitiated, describe what Aris is. Aris is the uh, business transformation suite, really helping customers to transform their organization and the way people work, to um, optimize um, their processes, uh, to differentiate in the markets, and also to stay in control um, in terms of regulations uh, and quality targets they have to um, comply to. So it's really an integrated suite where we have all the capabilities needed from um, designing the processes, measuring how the processes are executed, compare these two, um, manage the risk and compliance activities in a company, and also help them to automate uh, the processes uh, at the end and really closing that uh, loop. And we provide that in one integrated uh, suite and one product. Now, what are some of the forces that bring customers to you in the first place? Is it regulation? Is it competitive change? Is it technology transformation? It, it's all of that. Um, and I think that is where um, Aris is strong, that we can help customers to cover all these different use cases. So if they're trying to standardize their global way of working, um, differentiate from their competition by new customer journeys they are implementing or streamlining their internal um, processes to get rid of uh, inefficiencies. Um, it is about the compliance to regulations like Sarbanes Oxley, GDPR, uh, FDA compliance uh, in, in the pharma sector and in others. Um, and on the other side, as you mentioned, the um, IT transformations that are going on. Um, all the cloud migrations customers are doing are driving new processes. Um, or the big IT transformations in the SAP space, um, or the S4HANA migrations that are needed. And here we are leading uh, with our RS3 to help customers on all these use cases. The, are customers often surprised by how complex or convoluted their processes have become? Yeah, I think it's for, for many of them, in our, yeah, surprise or eye-opener when they really uh, see the measured processes. So when we take the data out of their SAP system or their Salesforce or Workday and really generate automatically their as-is executed processes. And often the management says, yeah, we have, this is our standard process. We might have two or three alternatives how that could be done. But when they really see the data, it is hundreds of variants, uh, really surprisingly hundreds of different routes through this process. And they really don't understand what their people are really doing and why they're doing it. And really surprised by the you know, big optimization potentials or inefficiencies they are uh, facing today. And what do you, what do they do to fix these problems? I imagine a lot of these problems relate to people taking matters into their own hands, people going outside the established process flow. Yeah. Do you uh, provide them with some guidance on how to fix the problem as well? Yeah, I think on the one hand side, I think think about you have monitored uh, and automatically created the as is processes and you have now these hundred ways how it could be done. We help them with our new generative AI capabilities to find automatically the anomalies in the process so that they can really concentrate on fixing them. Plus we are also helping them to understand the automation potential um, where they can automatically create a workflow or execution uh, of these steps to automate manual steps they have today. Um, and on the other side, help them to manage the changes that are needed. So if you see there is something broken, people are doing things they should not do, to communicate the new way of working to them and secure that everybody read it, understood it, and behaves um, how it should be done. 
Can you generalize about the kind of efficiency improvements you typically see customers achieve? Yeah, I think we really see um, a massive improvements um, in, uh, in that area. So we have customers in the, uh, in the telecom uh, industry that really improved their um, customer service levels uh, by 20, 30 percent. Um, we have customers when they think about the SAP HANA migration, saving uh, 10, 15 percent of their project costs uh, by doing it in a process oriented manner. And if you think about these projects that are multi-millions, hundreds of millions um, worth projects, um, and on the um, other side, it's really, uh, if you think about compliance, avoiding big fines that you get um, from the auditors that you need to pay. So all our banking customers really save millions by avoiding uh, these fines they normally have to pay uh, by using us. Uh, now you take a data-centric approach to process modeling. How do you capture this data in the first place? How do you capture the processes? I think there are um, two different uh, ways of doing that. I think first is you can have um, the extraction from your execution systems like SAP, Salesforce, and others, and automatically generate the process flow and use that as a starting point for your to be design. Um, the other way is you ask your employees how it should be done or how they're working today. And in the past, it was an, an empty piece of paper when they needed to start, let's say, designing their process. Uh, we are now helping them with our new Gen AI capabilities to um, get a best practice from the global knowledge about a, a good sales process in a retail company of that kind in that region so that they really can accelerate their design based on best practices powered by Gen AI. Um, or if I'm a user, I can just using Gen AI describe verbally saying, hey, my first step is this, then I do that, and then I need to decide. And so really describe it in your natural language. Um, and the RS AI companion then generates the process flow um, out of that. And then you can compare the designed way with the measured way and really put them um, as an overlay together so that you directly see um, all the uh, compliance uh, or conformance issues um, that there are process steps executed that should not be done, or there are steps yeah. missing in the execution, some 4i principles that are skipped, um, and that gives our customers the insights to improve the efficiency, but also stay uh, in a compliant way. And we also have big auditing companies, um, like the big five that are using our process mining capabilities to support their audit teams. In the past, they were, let's say, running around in a company asking people how you do it. Now they can use process mining to really see how it really was done. So the generative AI capabilities, everybody's talking about that at the at the conference uh, this week. Uh, how easy was it to adapt the off-the-shelf models to the business process use case? Yeah, I think we have um, different what scenarios where we use Gen AI. One is what I described, if you want to create um, a process, um, we use the you know, knowledge of the world that is available in these large language models, with the Azure OpenAI or ChatGPT, and there is so much process knowledge in there that we can le then leverage to create um, a template process uh, for the user. Um, the other use case is that customers want to have um, a chat GPT-like questions to their own process knowledge. So think about a, a big retailer, they have documented all their processes, how the people in the store should work, and then the user in the store can just take their iPhone and ask, hey, what should I do if there's an accident? 
what are the three steps I need to take, and then he can give direct answers via GenAI based on the process knowledge they have for standardized and provided to run in this store. Um, and the people do not need to be trained. It's a natural language question and answer way. Um, I think that really helps to, to accelerate that. And there we are using the customer specific process knowledge and put Gen AI on top of it. The first use case is more using the, the world wisdom. And the other use case is similar for process mining. We have all the, the data of the automatically created processes and the KPIs related to that. And then you can ask questions as we discussed, what are the anomalies in a process? Um, what are the advice? How can I approve that? So there we are combining the world knowledge and the um, uh, measured process and having Gen AI to support that in a very intelligent and smart way. Gen AI becomes a consultant in effect. Talk yeah. about talk about the the, the fit. Uh, Software AG coming out of the database application development world. How does Aris fit into the portfolio products? I think Aris is now. Um, being the main focus of Software AG um, going forward. Um, and it's the one area where we really see a lot of uh, growth in the market um, because with all the changes out there and all the crisis, um, it's really a must have for every company to get uh, their processes uh, optimized and under control. Um, and the Adabas natural side of the house um, is really uh, an existing customer base, a stable one um, that are now going also to um, to the cloud and leveraging new capabilities there. Um, but the new customers uh, we are seeing more on the uh, on the Aris and Alphabet side, where we're really growing the business uh, yeah, in big double-digit numbers um, in a very profitable way. Which is remarkable because the business is over 30 years old. This is not a new category, but clearly a growth category for you. What's ahead? How do, how do you continue to evolve on top of a, an established platform? Yeah, Aris is there in the market for 32 years um, and the evolution is by new use cases. So I think processes are the core of every business. So no business without a process. Um, and probably a good example for a new use case is the um, EU AI regulation that uh, just came out. And every company has to assess their AI apps they want to implement. If it's for uh, face recognition to let somebody in the uh, building or if it's um, meeting minutes uh, with a co-pilot or uh, um, deciding on a new employee. Um, and these AI apps needs to be assessed in terms of the risk based on a criteria catalog from the EU. Um, and the, the criteria are to be reflected where this application is used in the process. Just think about an AI app that is taking decisions. Um, if you do that for routing emails, probably no risk. If it's about deciding if you hire an employee or not, that's a high risk uh, category. Um, and then you need to register this uh, also at the EU level. Um, so it really depends on the process, where it is used, on the context. And we also help customers to do the governance around that because the AI apps will fastly evolve uh, and change what they can do. So you need to reassess that on a continuous basis. If you implement new ones, if you change existing ones, enhance capabilities. And we have the yeah, workflows uh, embedded in RS to reassess them, to trigger um, the communication with the EU. So that are new use cases where RS takes place. Um, and I think there will be for sure many more regulations coming up. Um, there's always crisis ahead. 
um, supply chain issues. Um, okay, we had COVID, uh, the next crisis will come. And I think you need to stay really resilient. And I think that is one of the, the top topics right now, for example, in banking and financial services. Yeah. They talk about operational resilience yeah. because the governments are forcing them to understand uh, and, on, and how resilient are there if a new crisis is coming. Um, and they need to document that, show that, prove that. And it's the end. The question, what are my business processes? What happens if it's broken? If the IT is broken, if the facilities are on fire or flooded, um, what are my reaction in terms of processes um, if a data center is going down or an ATM machine is not working? So what are the impacts? And uh, that needs to be assessed. And that's what we are providing and servicing with ours as well. Well, if, if governance, is, if uh, regulations are a prime driver of business, I, I don't think you'll have any shortage of business coming in the uh, in the uh, approaching years. Yeah, I think that's also the, the positive side in terms of uh, new customer journeys that many of our clients are developing with ours to identify new communications and improve the customer experience to really drive the top line. Um, bring new products to market, um, bring new services to the market, and the new service means new processes that you need to implement. If you change your business model, um, it will change the way the entire organization is acting. So that is a big driver uh, for our customers as well. So it's both sides of the coin, the revenue increasing cost optimization part, but uh, the control part. Exciting times, exciting opportunities, and you certainly excited the audience yesterday with your demo. Mark, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Paul. If you get a chance to check it out on Software AG's website, a demo of the new Aris, uh, Aris I should say, capabilities with the generative AI features. It, it is kind of a wow uh, example to look at uh, what they've done in, in, in back um, reverse engineering processes and showing how they can be improved with Gen AI, Gen AI a real breakthrough. Uh, Paul Gillen for theCUBE here at the Software AG International Music Group Conference. Stay with us.